doesn't go very low on my head. Because they go really low. Just going to wait to start the show while you guys try on those hats. Okay, I think I got it over at both uh, yeah. ear tips. Yeah, you got it. All right, bro. So hot. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of What Car I Should Buy. But this show is different because this is all about the car you should not buy. What car should I buy, Andre? <laughs> what car should I buy? Bro. 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 What do you guys What do you guys think of our new look? Can't stand it. Please let me get out of this. You can go. Oh, thank you. You can go. No, but seriously, guys, we're talking about uh, the worst cars we have personally ever owned. The team, the group. There's going to be four of us on the show. This is insane. Yeah, it's going to be like uh, rotating chairs that will come <laughs> in and out. <laughs> okay. Wow. I just saw a picture of myself. So yeah. that's... You look badass, uh, dude. You do. You look you're a gangster. You're a punk that's ass. something special. Yeah. Uh, so in this show, uh, Nathan is going to kick, kick us off. Then I'll go. Then Michael will go, and then Roman. All right, am I naming both of them? Uh, now we'll swap out as the show goes on. Yes. Roman's uh, got a hell of a story, too, so we'll end on that. Yeah, a couple of stories. So yeah. tell us your stories in the chat room, the worst car, or maybe truck you've owned. We're focused on cars in this show, so we're not talking trucks right that now. That is correct. We're not talking trucks. We'll be talking trucks tomorrow. <laughs> talking trucks tomorrow hey, at the same time. Joey's cleaning lady got the reference, the flat bill concept. Isn't that where we got this idea from? Yes. Kind of, yeah. Um, and then Roman ran with it. Yeah, oh yeah. It's a runaway train at this point. Hats. It's a runaway train. He absolutely loves the fact that I'm so ungodly uncomfortable wearing a flat bill hat trying to go over my ears with this giant head. <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> sort of We worked. actually found a hat for you. It worked, boss. Can, can you start? Uh, uh, well, f first of all, Kimariko says uh, uh, Pontiac Montana 1997. That's that's the van. That's. Uh, Do you remember those really horrible commercials with like, cowboys running next to the Montana minivans? I saw those. I remember them. They were terrible because it wasn't a very cowboy minivan. Nice. Um, all right, l let's get started. Uh, my first really horrible, awful vehicle was a penalty. What? Two things happened. One, my father caught me street racing, and two, he figured it would be a really good idea that I, when I go to junior prom, that I not get anybody pregnant. As such. We had a car from my family's wrecking yard that was procured somehow. It was, I believe, a 1978 AMC Matador. Woo! You got to understand how dude. horrible that car was because I, I can smell that horrible interior oh, yeah. right now. And it was like a velour, a crushed velour thing going on with giant seats in the front, but there was very little headroom, mediocre legroom, and the back seat was completely useless. My father thought it was the funniest thing ever because it was, the car's massive. It's a big car. It's a two-door, but it's big. Uh, it was dreadful. And yeah, it didn't go well, and prom didn't go well either. Well, but this car looks good. Was yours also Shut maroon up. and purple? First of all, one of the first things that happens with these cars is the rear suspension just completely goes. So when you see them on the street and they're not sagging completely in the back, that's because somebody mistakenly put money into them to restore them. They had, the one I drove had a 360 V8, I believe, and I think a three-speed automatic transmission. It could not get out of its own way. It was terrible on gas. I blinded everybody on the street because the rear was so low, the headlights were constantly pointing upwards. It handled terribly. I, it didn't even have a very good ride, even though it was a cushy 70s car. And the interior had that smell, and it wasn't that old. I mean, look, I'm an old guy. So that car, when I was driving it at the junior prom, was around 10 years old. Uh, but it just stank. It just smelled in so many ways. Oil was baked into it, transmission fluid you could smell, brake fluid, everything. To say that my date was displeased with that vehicle would be an understatement. About the only positive thing about that car is that nobody wanted to steal it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's next? Next, Zach, can I say the other one too? You can. Oh, okay. It was, and for those of you, yeah, it's a Chevy Citation too. Now the second Chevy, Citation. So wait, a penalty? No, no. This was also a penalty. Oh, okay. I got caught street racing again. Uh, I used to have a 1965 Mustang, and I uh, modified it and raced it. My dad basically said, if I catch you racing, I'm taking the car, and then you and I are going down to um, see the Matador. Only had to drive for a couple of days. This I had to drive for about a year, and that was in high school as a senior. 
He caught me racing. I went with him down to what used to be called an OPG, an, an official police garage, to go to an auction to buy basically the first car that he saw that was completely gutless and I wouldn't probably get in trouble with, and that's exactly what we found. It was a four-cylinder, not even the V6, but the four-cylinder. It's a front-wheel drive car. Kudos to Chevrolet for building something that is so slow that not only can it not get out of its way, but it overweighs its front tires. So when you go through a hard corner, you'll roll the bead every time. So that vehicle I had in high school, mine was kind of a maroonish brown, and it had a nice tan interior. Dude, the radio, this is how it came standard, is sideways. Inside the car, I'm sorry? if you ever go and see it one of the- It was vertical? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a vertical radio, and they had this, so they replaced the thing on it, and you can never get the stations right. It was terrible. That car was incredibly slow. It constantly broke down. It had rust issues. It wasn't that old. Uh, I mean, it was like a six or seven year old car or something like that when I got it. And yeah, it was terrible. And it did keep me out of trouble because I literally could not break the speed limit in it. And yes, once again, not exactly a car to impress girls, especially after having a 65 Mustang, which was awesome. So he kind of taught me the lesson. Uh, ooh, I got in a lot of trouble. Ooh, ooh. Be bell, 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 Vince Clark, 21 bucks Canadian. A tie for my worst car, Pontiac Torrent and a Mini Cooper. Both were garbage, and this is coming from a guy who's owned a Hyundai Excel and a Chevy Chevette. Not exactly high bars to clear. Yeah, yeah. Was your Mini a CVT by chance? Was, was, wasn't there a... He might be talking about the first generation of Mini if he's talking about a bold Pontiac Torrent. Okay, so... You guys missed a ding too. Robin, Red Robin gives two bucks. Oh, sorry. Red, Red, Red Robin. Robin. Red Robin, two oh, bucks. Oh, thank you, Robin. You guys are Appreciate awesome, it. and you're awesome also. Yes, you are. Um, yeah, I'm curious about that uh, that Mini, uh, what year it was. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I was very displeased with both vehicles. And the thing is, is that they were you know, large American cars. Even though that thing was front-wheel drive, it was an American car as well. And the Matador was just terrible in every way. One of the very good reasons why AMC just didn't quite make it. Yeah. So, by the way, a couple of people are responding oh, in yeah? the chat room. So, first, uh, Dan Atkinson, who actually visited us this morning. Oh, hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. It's nice meeting um, you. Dan said that first-generation Ford Explorer was his worst car ever because of the fragile automatic transmission. So, there, there you have it. Yeah. I had uh, one of those. That was my first car. Uh, that was Zach's producer Zach's first car as well. Was yours also fragile? No, because I actually had the five-speed manual, which is a Mazda transmission. It's okay. A lot more durable than the automatic. Nice. There was also... So a, you had to be the two-door then, yeah? Yeah, it was a sport. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Charlie Porch, uh, 2003 Monte Carlo, electric problems. That's mm -hmm. um, That can happen. Yes. That can happen. Um, let's see, Boney Chuck uh, actually had an issue with a 4Runner, 1996 4Runner, which is kind of rare, right? I mean, yeah, usually, perfect. usually those little trucks, you know, in Boulder, they're high dollar because... You know, they're four-wheel drive, and they last forever. My friend is on his fourth over the last, what, 30 years, on his fourth. Well, forward. then it didn't last forever now, did it? Well, it did. Well, he, drove, he drove them until a million miles or something. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, it's, and, but these, they're talking, you know, some vehicles just have issues. Sometimes water gets into the wrong spot. Sometimes things happen. Derek Kelty also had a citation. Citation one, or maybe just a just a citation, uh, two point eight V six. Yeah, citation. that was the much better engine. In fact, it, was that the citation two you had, or did you have the bigger four door hatchback? I think that one also had the uh, V six as an option. Okay, C can I go? Yes, please. Can I go? So I, I haven't owned a terrible like big number of cars, and my history is more of a like VW and Audi history. I also had a BMW, but the worst car probably out of all of them and maybe also the best, well, there's, there's a two part to the story, mm -hmm. um, was a 1987 Audi 5000 S Quattro. And it's a sharp looking car. Here, here's one example of that car. Yes. Zach? No? No? Is there a second image? There oh. is a second yeah. image. Look at that Woo! handsome man. Yeah, wow. he's like James Bond, or like a James Bond villain, actually. Can you see that image, guys? Yeah. So, yeah. so that's my actual car. That's actually me. And that's uh, Prom Night. 
prom day. The three years ago. Prom, yes, that was only three years ago. Um, so here's a story with this car. I had it for about a year or two. Um, it was an expensive car to begin with. In 87, it was one of the more luxurious. It had a straight five, yeah. inline five engine, quattro system. It had a five-speed manual transmission. Pretty awesome. It was riddled with electric problems. My windows almost never worked. They were power windows. Mm -hmm. This is, well, it's late 90s. So that was like 10 years after, after the car was made. Right. Um, so I went, that summer, I went to see No Doubt. Uh, do you guys remember that band? No, yes, no doubt. Yes, Gwen Stefani. Everybody remembers. <laughs> Just say Gwen Stefani. Okay, Gwen Stefani at Red Rocks in Colorado, and halfway through the show at Red Rocks in Colorado, sky opened up and the rain started pouring down, and we all they canceled the show. It was too dangerous. Uh, we we piled in my car. It was my buddy and I, and there's three girls that that we all came to the concert together. Right, Friend, we're all friends. Of course. Okay? All friends. So we're coming down the mountain, and it's traffic jam like crazy because everybody's leaving at the same time. My car dies. Ah. So uh, l um, basically, in the Audi 5000, the battery is underneath the rear seat. So I said, "Girls, you gotta jump out now." And this is, you know, partially on the highway. I love this story. And they're like, "Why?" Because it's freezing rain. You know, it's it's really cold night in, in a summer night. Like, well, I have to jump the car. The battery is underneath the. Uh, Seat. Underneath the seat. So they reluctantly jumped out. I jumped the car from a from the car behind me. So somebody was really nice and helped me out. I drove another half a mile and died again. It's a bad alternator. It, the car wasn't charging. And um, well, I've seen some of those friends again, but but some of them just never spoke to me again. I wonder why. So so that car was pretty cool, but it was also let me down in a big way. Yeah, so there you go. Well, do you have another one? Well, yeah, that uh, German car that let you down? Yeah, so do we have an image of that? <laughs> Unfortunately, I, l I was so upset with this car, I don't oh. even have a picture of it. But it's beautiful. Um, this is not me, and this is not the car, but I had this. This is a um, BMW 733, I believe. Right? Um, I, I don't even remember. I want to forget it. It just, it just uh, I drove it in high school. It was like an 86. Uh, and it just kept breaking down, and it's, it's expensive to fix. You know those those German cars, even old ones. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It was just, just um, so that's kind of my history. Uh, kind of German cars, mainly VWs, Audis, and one BMW. Yeah, and he also had a Volvo. I did. Ha Ooh, I had a Volvo, but that car was pretty solid. Yeah. I had a Volvo 740 GLE non-turbo. I think my parents were p trying to play a trick on me, kind of like your your uh, dad and your mm, parents, because yeah. uh, that car was slow. But I could put three rows of seats. So let's see now that makes it cool. Reverse and reverse facing seats, you know, in the back, so I could pile like hundreds of people in there. Yeah, no, that was that wasn't what my parents had in mind. Rob know. 379 says, uh, nice thing with resting cars is they get lighter over time. That's a good point. That is true. Yeah, Super Leggero yeah. over time. <laughs> uh, and it's a very different type of rest up here in Colorado th than it is in California where I was born and raised. Uh, cars seem to get heavier <laughs> when they start to rust in California with all moisture. of the deposits and moisture and everything else. Seats and foam get full of stuff. It gets really nasty out there. Dry is better up here. Yeah, but for the most part, you know, some desert cars like in California and some desert states in here, they last a long time because in general it's low, low humidity uh, areas. Absolutely is. So what do you say, boss? Should we move on to the next uh, person? Yeah, I think I'll get Mike in here. He's All right, Mikey. Story. All right. He's dying to tell you guys his story. Yep. You want me to go? Oh, Don Lemon went to prom in an Audi 5000 also. His was in 1985. Ooh. Far out. Do you want me to go or you want to go? Uh, you, well, go. go. you go and you get, you get. I'll get, yeah. You yeah. yell at us from the distance. Yeah, yeah. Yell at us. yeah. <laughs> okay, Andre. Yo, what's up? Hey, guys. So, Hello, everyone. Uh, hey, Michael. Michael is here. Hi, friends. <laughs> so, um, so tell us something about some, some of your cars or your family cars. Yeah, actually. so I've only owned two cars in my life, and I still own both of them, and I, I don't think either of them were particularly bad. I had my first car was an 84 
Volvo 240 Turbo, which you do you have a picture of my car? No, I don't. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> you and, still have it. But I still have it. Okay. My dad keeps it for me in Seattle, and it's great. It's awesome. Uh, it has 265,000 miles, and it still runs somehow. See, I, uh, Volvos are great. My wagon was really good, it was, too. It's awesome. It's treated me really well. And my next car that, that I have here is a 2015 GTI that has had a couple issues, but not, nothing like catastrophic. So I, I'm not going to count those. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull from the vehicles of my childhood Okay. Uh, because there were some turds <laughs> when I was growing up, well, for give sure. Give me a couple turds. The, the one that stuck out particularly to me is uh, the 04 BMW 325XI. So uh, this is it. This is the exact color that it was, too. It was this kind of weird blue, green, silver. Um, it had a 2.5 liter straight six, which actually wasn't problematic in its own right. Um, but what happened here is just a slew of electrical gremlins, namely the passenger door handle from the inside. I was talking to my dad about this today. It broke like four times. Hmm. We had to keep getting the passenger door handle fixed because it would just like, you'd be stuck in the car. So yeah. you'd have to get out, walk around, open the door for you. And mind you, this was like a brand new, well, that wasn't brand new. We got it like two years old, but mm -hmm. it was new enough that a problem like that should not have been a repeating issue. Uh, the car itself, by my dad's reports, I actually never drove this one because I was like eight when we had it or something like that. No, that's all right. Yeah, no, I was eight. I was exactly eight years old. Okay. Um, but he said it was good to drive, but just the electrical issues were terrible. So we had that problem, right, with the door. And then the driver door had the same issue. So we fixed it, like, the same thing four times. And then the next, the, the other side it started happening to. Uh, and eventually we got rid of it, and it was just, it was a, an electrical nightmare of a BMW, which I'm sure it, a lot of people It's funny, because a lot of cars, they have that problem area. And maybe it was a defect in the design, or yeah, maybe at the knows? factory. Yeah. So like the Outback that my wife is currently driving, the 2015, mm -hmm. it has a uh, passenger side front mirror uh, window switch broken five times. Five times? Yeah, we keep replacing it and it keeps breaking. So some cars just have that gremlin, so to speak, yeah. uh, that, <laughs> that keeps coming back, right? Yeah, and for that, for this particular BMW 325XI, it was that, that passenger door handle on the front. So front annoying, side. mostly. Oh, God, it was so mostly annoying. Mostly very annoying. The next one was maybe even more comical. So uh, in 2006, my mom bought a 2007 Volkswagen Beetle convertible. Now, mind you, I grew up in Seattle, where it uh, is traditionally very rainy mm -hmm. most of the time. So already buying a convertible was kind of a questionable choice. Oh, boy. Was uh, that this color? No. Hers was red okay. with a tan roof and a tan interior. Um, mm. And the big issue we had <laughs> with our convertible Beetle uh, was that the convertible roof was not installed properly at the factory. And so we had to have the whole roof replaced because it wasn't installed correctly the first time. Uh, and Question. it would, yes? How can you install that properly though? And it looks like <laughs> it just plopped on the back of the car. Uh, I don't know. It, uh, <laughs> That's the cover. <laughs> That's this is the cover. This is the cover. The roof itself was kind of this weird full thing. It's like thing. a ton. It was also <laughs> because it was. But it's a nod to the past. It's yeah. just it's stylish, it right? It was. It was really. Fun. My mom loved it. She loved that car. Uh, my dad, though, whenever he would get stuck driving it, um, go to the next picture, Zach. There. For those of you who don't know, this generation of Beetle had a little vase in the dashboard uh, that oh. was meant for a flower. Yeah. <laughs> and my mom bought this little like. Uh, it was like a like a wire flower kind of deal. Like it was a fake flower, but it was always in there because she loved her little flower vase. And my dad, would, whenever he got angry on the road, like he'd get mad at other drivers, he'd grab the flower and just start shaking the flower at people while he was yelling at them, which I really tried to convince my dad was not the best way to actually convince people he was angry with them. Um, but yeah, he would shake the flower and it... It was it was not a great with a way. very mean face. Just I'm assuming really angrily, but but not many cars since or before have had flower vases. No, so no, but that's, the, the that's, vase that's, is that's a, crazy. It's a wonderful thing. So there you go. Those were the worst cars that my family has ever owned. There were some other bad ones. Uh, we had, we've had like four. Disco one, disco two. <laughs> we had, oh, well, how we many? Had, in the late '90s, we had a disco one, a disco two, and then in, recently we've we owned two P38 Range Rovers, which is the the O2 Range Rover. And then we sold one, and then we still have the one. But there's been a lot of bad cars. Those were the two worst ones, though. Oh, okay. Roman, tag me Roman, out here. Can you tag in? 
Again. Here comes Roman. Roman, do you want a flat bell hat? Hell yeah. I'll wear the bra hat. Oh, there. Whoa. Oh. Slick goes over here. no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Looking slick bra. Yeah, man. That's, that's how we rock at a TFL. So there's a lot of comments here. So yeah. some people are saying that, uh, for example, an Audi S4 from Outboard. Um, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name completely, but uh, 2001 S4, that was actually a really good car overall in performance, and uh, that was a good Audi. They had really, really good time with it, but but most of these are, uh, what was it, some of yours? Well, there's one car that was the worst car I ever owned, and that was a car that almost killed me and my wife on That's right? bad. Yeah, I was living in Prague at the time, and uh, what you could do in the 90s when you lived in Europe is you could buy a car, European delivery, from BMW, and what BMW would do is they would title and um, insure the car for up to a year. So you could actually buy it, pick it up in Europe, and then drive it around in Europe for a year, and then they would ship it home for you. Uh, and at the time, I had a uh, 300ZX twin turbo, okay. and I wanted to do the European delivery because a buddy of mine, uh, Mike, had done it with the BMW convertible. And we were living in Prague, and you could pick the car up in Munich, right? Uh, so in order to do it, First of all, I had to ship the Z home because it was an American Z. Okay. So I shipped the Z home, and then you had to go to an American dealer and buy the BMW. So basically, ship the Z home, traded it in an M3, the E30. This is in the United States. Yes, and then and flew back nice. to Europe where I was living okay. uh, and then waited to pick it up. Um, and so at that time, that was the first M3 that came to America. Uh, it was slightly detuned, which kind of was a, was a pisser. Was this it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. And the problem with it was... You could have it in like at that time, I want to say like four colors, right? And the colors were like uh, Dakar yellow, which was crazy yellow. Um, there was like some kind of red. There was a, yeah, there was, there was a white and then there was black. And I hate black cars because they always seem like death to me. And this car almost fulfilled that. So I got the black one uh, and move back to fly back to Europe, get the call. I drive from Prague to pick it up uh, in Germany. In Munich? Yeah, yeah. And, and because they build the M3s and the 3 Series in the Munich plant. And uh, they give you a plant tour as part of the pickup process. Uh, and so we're doing the plant tour, uh, and they get to the color immersion booth, right? <laughs> and they're like, we at BMW consider ourselves a niche car manufacturer and you can have your car in any color you want you have a color bring it in we'll match it and i'm like dude four colors <laughs> black red yellow <laughs> and, white. and white that was the only choice i had okay so what did they say to that they said uh, it's european delivery it's an american car you know, no choice for you. no choice and the, i mean you know the, the european cars had like almost 300 horsepower at that time the american cars i think had 240 but they were a lot cheaper right the european cars even at that time were in Deutschmarks, like you know, like fifty or sixty thousand dollars, whereas the American car, I think I paid thirty-six thousand for mine at the time. Anyway, so pick it up, uh, drive it home. I, I had it for less than I want to say two weeks, and my wife and I decided to go for a drive from Prague, where we used to go to Munich, just to hang out for the weekend, right? Because in Prague you couldn't get things like Diet Coke at the time. <laughs> so, okay. so we would go to Munich, uh, and we were on our way to Munich, and it was raining very hard, and the Czech roads at that time were really bad. They were kind of, um, well, they, 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 you know, the trucks had gone down them, and there were these, like, like big indentations, and so the car would follow it. But when it was raining, it would also start to hydro plane, mm -hmm. which I didn't know, especially with these big tires. And even back then, they were, you know, they were good-sized tires. Yeah, good. yeah, and they were offset. So I was passing a Volvo, got next to him. I think I was doing about... Um, not that fast, maybe 60 miles an hour or something like that. Come back in my lane and the car starts to go hydroplane and then it starts to go sideways and I'm going down the road sideways, uh, which was obviously not good because now I'm no longer the driver, my wife's in the car, I'm a passenger. We hit the embankment, we roll, um, my hand actually went through the window uh, and we hit a tree. So my body like slammed into the side of the door because you're the tree in this case. Okay, I'm the tree. You're the tree, so the car goes boom. And then uh, the sunroof, which is this huge mechanism, right? You think the sunroof is only that little part, but it takes up the whole roof, right? It's one the big... The rails, yeah. Yeah, and the whole thing went down my back from the car rolling. Uh, and then, like, the worst probably 24 hours of my life. How uh, was your wife? I mean, the, she was... She looked like I had beat her up. She, she looked, she was all, like, bruised and oh. really hurt. Um, and so um, I crawled out of the car... And I'm just laying there, and I didn't know I had a broken leg at the time because I only had broken one of the bones, so I had a broken leg. Uh, my wife was, you know, pretty messed up as well. Um, and uh, yeah, they picked me up in an ambulance and take me to this. Uh, it was a Sunday, and we because um, we were going out on a Sunday. I remember that? Sure. 
And uh, because nothing happens in Germany on a Sunday, so this was really surprising what happened. So they take me to the hospital, they put me on a table, there's a doctor there like smoking a cigarette, right? <laughs> and he looks yeah. at me and he goes, what do you want to do? And I'm like, uh, help, help me, <laughs> help me, <laughs> please. <laughs> and the police officer comes in while I'm laying on, and there's, you know, it's me on a metal table. My wife was better off than I was. P the Czech police officer comes in and says, I'm going to have to ticket you. And I'm like, why are you going to have to ticket me? And he goes, for causing an accident. And I go, but I only, you know, hurt myself <laughs> and destroyed my own car. And they go, that's still a ticket. So I wasn't thinking too straight. So I opened up my wallet. And at the time I had something like, I want to say like, 2,000 crowns in my wallet, which was probably the equivalent of, at that time, like 100 bucks or something, maybe 3,000 crowns, right? And I go, how much? He looks at my wallet, he sees the 3,000 crowns, he takes it out, grabs the 3,000. <laughs> that much, that exactly much. much. That much. So we're laying there with this chain-smoking doctor, and my wife remembers, <laughs> that we, who's doing nothing for us, and my wife remembers that we have BMW emergency service, right? And we're still in the Czech Republic, but Germany's maybe a couple hours across the border, so it's not far. So I'm like, hey, can you please go and call BMW on a Sunday and see if they'll do something? Uh, and uh, at that point, all I have left in my wallet is like 100 bucks. 100 bucks, right? So we needed to use the phone, and they said, you have to pay for the phone call. And all I had was a $100 bill. And they're like, you have to pay for it. They won't let us use the phone. So <laughs> my wife goes to the little commissary, you know, and she had to buy a liter of Coke. To and get the change? And exchange it, yeah. And the exchange rate was something like, uh, you know, I said uh, 3,000 crowns was like 100 bucks at the time. I think she got 1,000 crowns. So they gave her a third of what it was worth. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. And this, this is, is not helpful. This is not helpful. And so then I'm laying there, you know, pretty badly injured. She's wandering around. And we call up BMW Emergency Service on a Sunday. Uh, and we call this dude, he call him our angel. This, uh, I think his name was Elios. Uh, or something like that, and um, he uh, got in an ambulance and came across the border, picked me up, my, me and my wife are from the Czech hospital, and he was incredible, right? He like bitched out the Czech doctor. <laughs> He's like, what the hell are you doing? Because I'm, you know, I'm pretty banged up. And, yeah. Well, broken leg. Yeah, broken leg, you know, all kinds of shit going on. Uh, throws me in the, in the ambulance, takes me across the border. We get to like the German hospital on a Sunday night. They like cut my pants off, you know, rush me to the x-ray and like take care of you how, how, how we should be taken care of. So yeah, it was a, it was a pretty bad experience. Uh, and then like to make that, this is the crazy part, right? So this is Germany sometimes, it's really efficient. Within a week, we had the money for the car in our bank account. So the car was totaled, obviously. Um, and within a week, they had you know basically refunded the money. Uh, and then I was talking to the guy from BMW who was tasked to come and pick it up, right? To, to take it back to Germany because you still had to kind of like, like you know, salvage it, right? Yeah. He said that everything in the car had been stripped. <laughs> So like the wheels were gone, the steering wheel was gone, the shifting knob was gone. It was it just was a just a hulk of a car was left. And this was not like legal, right? This was this was just a this was yeah. just the checks being the checks, yeah. So that's probably the worst car I've ever owned. Okay, you guys Maybe. have a few uh, people. Dings? Yeah. yeah. Dings. So, so trucker Dan five oh one. Uh first of all, Dan Atkinson another five bucks. So uh, Dan had a question. He said, Can can you write Rust? Rusty near the rust holes? Yeah, sure, of course. Uh, yeah, I'll write it. Rusty. Yeah. Uh, and what what is uh, Trucker Dan? Um, what was your real impression on the Atlas? Do you mean the VW Atlas? And yeah. it's not 60K. Or the Atlas truck. Oh, probably the truck. Or the, the, or the Rivian. I don't know if that's... Yeah, so uh, Atlas, let's just go down the list of all the Atlases. <laughs> so, it was a Ford Atlas concept. So if, there's an, if you mean the VW Atlas, it's really good. <laughs> yes, it's, it's not 60K and it's a good SUV. If you mean the Rivian, what do you, I don't know, you were there. Yeah, so the Rivian was actually cool. So um, I was at the New York Auto Show and the R1T is their prototype truck. Yep. Uh, by the way, people are saying we look ridiculous in these hats. Yeah, well, so I mentioned that off. So yeah, thanks. Um, hey, you, you might want to zoom us out there, Zach. <laughs> We're kind of zoomed in really tight. But but then, uh, uh, but then, um, so it looked like a concept, but everything was working. So it's actually a running prototype. I think they had that truck or maybe another um, an SUV at the Aspen event in Colorado a few months back. So it's actually a moving prototype. So it kind of impressed me on both sides. So it, it looked good. It was functional. And they look like they have enough budget, at least for now, to continue and get it productionalized, which, which they say it's going to be by the end of 2020. But 
there's of course that cloud that's hanging there. You know, are they going to make it? You know, is it going to be a successful company? But Amazon just dumped a lot of money in there. Yeah, you know, the story from those guys is that GM wanted to actually invest in the company, uh, and they refused to take GM money because GM uh, would have prevented them from selling basically cars and trucks to other manufacturers. Uh, so they refused to work with GM. And, you know, we did a video today on TFL Truck saying it's the most significant truck car vehicle of the year. Um, people are like saying, why is that? And, I mean, if you watch that video, I would highly recommend it's over in TFL Truck. I think yeah. you'll see why it's the most significant. I mean, it's, it's a packaging wonder. Uh, it certainly, uh, you know, takes the electric tech to the next level, right? A Tesla has dual motors. This actually has four, yeah, so you have a motor in each of the uh, wheels, so you can appropriate, think about that off-road, right? I mean, whatever wheel has traction, <laughs> yeah. you can you can actually appropriate power to. Uh, it's got a lot of really cool and thoughtful features. And also looks really luxurious. It yeah. looks nice. We'll see if that makes it into production. Yeah, and also it has crazy, crazy uh, just stats, you know, three seconds here to hey, 60. You got a thing for Dan here. Another truck with Dan. Yeah, yeah. Here's Go. clarifying on the EV yeah, truck, the SUV yeah. that's coming out. Yeah. Um, yeah. The video on. Yeah. And, and, that's and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna say, you know, they they haven't built out a dealer network. Uh, they have a factory that's pretty much the way it was after Mitsubishi. No, was it Mitsubishi? Who? Yeah, it was Mitsubishi. After Mitsubishi left it, and I was actually talking to some of their engineers, and they said when they walked in, there was still like coffee <laughs> in the coffee pots, like like it was like, deserted. Like the people just just, you know, left. just left. Yeah. Hey, another one. Wow. Greg Miller. Greg Miller. Uh, and so they don't have a dealer network. They don't have a functional factory. Uh, they certainly don't have the vehicle that they're going to actually sell. So they have a prototype. And a lot of those really cool features, including that little pass-through, mm -hmm. um, you know, which is perfect for storing bodies, somebody said. Oh, wow. Uh, it's true. Uh, the, the other thing is everything is motorized, right? I mean, the tunnel cover was motorized. The front, the hood was motorized. So, I mean... Yes, it's good, but is it going to be reliable? Is it going to be like if you use it as a truck, right? And if you open the tailgate, a, you know, a thousand times, is it still going to function? So there's a lot of those questions. Yeah, yeah, but you know, it it, it really is completely out of the box thinking, uh, and it's great to see that you know the the main manufacturers have competition. You know, the longer I'm in this business, the more you realize just how slowly um, the new vehicles adapt to the latest tech. And right now we're in a moment in time where the tech is racing ahead of the main manufacturer's ability to stay with it. And there's uh, startups. Yeah, and there's, yeah, there's disruptors like Tesla mm -hmm. uh, that are actually um, gonna start causing some significant pain to the main manufacturers. Uh, and yeah, you know, in America, I always think, Andre, the, the pendulum swings really quickly. So yeah, right now it still hasn't swung completely over to EV, but once more and more people get into an EV and start to realize just how, I'm gonna say, addictive instant torque can be, Right. Yeah. Uh, then uh, I think you'll. You know, I was just driving a Tesla to pick up these hats. Right. Yes. Uh, uh, and it, it's it's and just. You were having fun. Yeah. It's just amazing. Like any hole in traffic, and I hate to do this, but it's like, boom. Yeah. You just you just you know, lock load and uh, pull the trigger, man, and you're in there. Yeah. By the way, a Tesla series is on TFL Car on our TFL Car channel. Yeah, and we crashed it, by the way. <laughs> so. But this, this week's video. So that's upcoming. Yeah, on Friday we're going to do the video. It's, on it's how not a total. It's, it's, it's a, a dent. It's a minor ding. It's not a minor ding. Oh, okay, it's, it's a big ding. It's a big it's ding. It's a bit of a ding. Because it's thousands of dollars in repair costs. And so we're, we're going to get to go through the repair process and take you guys with us. So look forward to that uh, video. And then, of course, I don't know if you saw on this on TFL Car, we're going to start up our Cheap Jeep series again. Mm -hmm. And we're moving it over because you guys told us yesterday over to TFL Truck. Truck. Yep, so it'll, it'll be there on Saturday. So we're going to uh, have that uh, first video in the series on Saturday. So I hope you guys enjoy it. We worked really hard on it. Uh, and thanks to all of our Patreon supporters. And thanks to you guys. We're able to actually, I think, hopefully make more entertaining and fun videos like that. Hell yeah, and video series too. And Gregor is asking, will we send us a hat to Isaac? Yes. Uh, yes. One yes. of these? Well, our, our regular hat. Oh, regular hat, not one of these. Well, we have... Ding. Is there another ding? 279 Canadian. 279 this Canadian. Tesla is uh, is there a sinkhole? Democratic sinkhole. Well, uh, you know, you know, I, oh. I, I I got. I'll tell one last story before we sign off, right? So, um, yeah, yeah. When uh, Tesla first started, I got to interview Elon Musk. Uh, they, his brother. That was several years. Yeah, ago. his brother lives here in uh, Boulder. Uh, and he has a restaurant, and Elon decided to open up a uh, Tesla store here in downtown, and then Colorado gave him a $42,000 
local tax credit if you were to buy the Roadster at the time. And so uh, I waited for him and I waited for him to interview him at the store opening and they're like, hold on, you have to wait for the news to do interview him. And finally, like at 11 o'clock, I got to interview him and he was pretty in the bag at that point. And he was uh, he having was, a good time? He was having a good time at this grand opening party. Yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, and the very first question I always ask is, say your name and your title for the record. And of course, we know his name is Elon Musk. But it's always good for the editor. It's just something we do. Don't take it personally, Elon. It wasn't. It's a journalist thing. It's a journalist thing. Okay. And he says, my name is Elon Musk, and I am king of the world. And actually said, my name is Henry VIII, and I'm king of the world. And the interview just went downhill from there. (laughs) So whenever they open up the Elon Musk Museum, I've still had that interview, and I'll, I'll pass it on to you guys. If you want to use it, you're welcome to use it. I never, we never actually published it because it was so um, interesting. Okay. So th- on that note, we can close down. Yeah. Tomorrow is a t- talking trucks. Yeah, talking trucks tomorrow. T- tomorrow's trucks. So we'll we'll see you here, and Mr. Truck will be here. Come back tomorrow, and you can see Kent wearing that hat. Ooh! Are we gonna, are we gonna have Kent wear this thing? Yes. We should make yeah. Kent wear that. Yes. Yeah. I, I, Andrew, you've taken to it, dude. Well, it's comfy. Uh, he likes it. People people hate <laughs> me wearing the hat, but uh, uh, it's comfy. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks right. for watching. Thank you very much. Play us out, Andre, please. Heck yeah. Thank you. See you guys tomorrow. Or. You'll see Andre and Kent tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Whoa. That's like bad 80s music, Andre.